the third type of modification we have been discussing in that we have discussed the isolation of analog resistant mutants and the second one is isolation of reverdant mutant this we are studying under the title of modification of microorganisms for the overproduction of microbial metabolites primary metabolites such that these microorganisms do produce the feedback inhibitors or repressors but the feedback inhibitors or repressors are not recognized by the mutants biochemical machinery so first is analog resistant mutants and the second one is isolation of revertent mutant let us understand what is this revertents <coughs> the wild type or the natural isolates which are inferior producers so first they are mutated to oxytropic mutants like we have seen in case of second type of modification so there is a wild type which will call them as prototrophs these wild type organisms are exposed to mutagenic agent the mutation happens and then these organisms will lose its ability to synthesize a particular growth factor we call them as oxytropic mutants then there is a first step of mutation then again these oxytropic mutants are isolated and these oxytropic mutants their population is again exposed to mutagenic agent so that the mutation will happen and these oxytropic mutants are again will start the production of that particular growth factor which was lost during the first mutation that means again the oxytropic mutants are converted back to parental type means they again become prototropic type so these types of mutants which are generated as a result of two step mutation process are called as revertent mutants now what will be the difference between revertent mutants and earlier the wild type wild type organisms the difference is that these revertents are the possible over producers of microbial metabolite so there is wild type population which are exposed to mutagenic agent to generate oxytropic mutants oxytropic mutants population is exposed again to mutagenic agent and that will go back to the parental type or prototropic so with two mutations having occurred at the loci what is this loci or we have understood already what is the site of mutation mutation happens in genes associated with synthesis of that particular key enzyme so if the mutation occurs twice at the same loci means the gene which is concerned with the synthesis of key enzyme so in the first step of mutation the gene will be modified such that it will not produce that particular enzyme but again when the same type of organisms are exposed to mutagenic agent the site of mutation is same associated with synthesis of the same key enzyme then again the organism resumes the synthesis of that enzyme so because of these two mutations having occurred at the same loci concerned with the production of key enzyme the enzyme of revertent mutant is somewhat modified or it will be a different from the enzyme of the original prototropic strain and this is not susceptible to 
the control by normal control metabolite as we have seen in that diagram unbranched pathway a gets converted to e so this end products or the enzymes they do not recognize the presence of inhibitors or depressor this is a general principle of generation of revertent mutants and uh, how it uh, how it is possible to overproduce the microbial metabolites the example of the use of revertent mutants for the production of primary metabolites japanese scientists they investigated the use of prototropic revertents of brevibacterium flavum for the production of lysine so we'll be uh, studying this example that again brevibacterium flavum organism is modified by this kind of mechanism means the revertents of brevibacterium flavum are the over producers of lysine amino acid the isolated prototropic revertents from a uh, homocerine dehydrogenase deficient mutant this is very important what are these revertents these revertents are generated from homocerine dehydrogenase deficient mutants means initially there were there were prototropic brevibacterium flavum so these prototropic brevibacterium flavum are exposed to mutagenic agent they become oxotropic for lysine they become oxotropic for some of the microbial metabolites again these oxotropes are exposed to mutagenic agent so that the production of growth factors or microbial metabolite it resumes so in this example homocerine dehydrogenase deficient mutants what are these these are oxotropic mutants so they are oxotropic for homocerine so these oxotropic mutants are exposed to mutagenic agent to generate revertent mutants in order to understand this we need to go back to the biochemical pathway which we have already studied so the over production of lysine was due to the very low level of homocerine dehydrogenase in the revertents which presumably resulted in the synthesis of threonine and methionine in quantities sufficient for the growth only but insufficient to cause inhibition or repression we'll try to understand the meaning of these lines in next slide so in order to understand that we need to see the biochemical pathway so lysine belongs to aspartate family so as we have seen aspartate gets converted to aspartyl phosphate through a key enzyme that is aspartokinase which is under control of lysine plus threonine so concerted feedback control is existing over aspartokinase then there is a branch point aspartyl semialdehyde gets converted to homocerine through homocerine dehydrogenase enzyme which is also a key enzyme controlled independently by methionine and threonine this is the biochemical pathway that we have understood so homocerine dehydrogenase the position of homocerine dehydrogenase you need to remember responsible for synthesis of homocerine so if you remember this is the example of generation of revertent mutants from homocerine oxotropes now let us see how it happens so this is the parental type this is the biochemical pathway existing in the parental type that means prototrophs 
synthesizing all the amino acids and also there is presence of feedback control systems so if the organism is modified such that it will not synthesize homocysteine dehydrogenase that means prototrophs are converted to oxotrophs we call these oxotrophs as homocysteine oxotrophs such that there will be no synthesis of homocysteine dehydrogenase so the organism will be like this this is the biochemical pathway that will exist in this homocysteine oxotroph now this homocysteine oxotroph is exposed again to mutagenic agents so second time mutation and considering the fact that or the possibility that the mutation will happen at the same loci so what was the loci of earlier modification or mutation it was genes associated with homocysteine dehydrogenase enzyme considering the possibility that second time mutation will also occur in the genes associated with synthesis of homocysteine dehydrogenase what will happen that the organism due to second time mutation will start production of homocysteine dehydrogenase enzyme when it starts production of homocysteine dehydrogenase enzyme there will be synthesis of homocysteine methionine threonine and isoleucine and the, then the question arises that this threonine will go and along with lysine it will inhibit the aspartokinase and how there will be over production of lysine so the answer to that is this prototrop now will call it as a revertan this revertan because of two times mutation at the loci associated with synthesis of homocysteine dehydrogenase the what will happen the synthesis of homocysteine dehydrogenase will decrease means the organism will produce homocysteine dehydrogenase but the rate of synthesis of homocysteine dehydrogenase will decrease because of two times exposures to mutagenic agents so this is the modification that will happen in this revertant low level synthesis of homocysteine dehydrogenase and how it will affect it will affect the level of other metabolites like homocysteine so there will be decreased production of homocysteine if there is decreased production there will be decreased production of methionine threonine and isoleucine what is the meaning of decreased production decreased production means due to low level of homocysteine dehydrogenase there will be synthesis of low level of methionine threonine and isoleucine that means it will synthesize the product like methionine threonine and isoleucine in a quantity sufficient to support the growth only and you see there will be no inhibitions or no feedback controls because feedback control happens whenever there is over production but in this case there will be no over production of methionine there will be no synthesis of threonine in excess so there is no question of any inhibition and you see that threonine whenever it is synthesized in excess and whenever lysine is synthesized in excess both of these threonine plus lysine are going to inhibit the aspartokinase enzyme and this is how there will be there will be no synthesis or the production of lysine and further other amino acids will stop but in this case that will never happen because the quantity of threonine is never going to be in excess because 
homocysteine dehydrogenase is synthesized in a very less quantity and this is how if threonine is not available there will be no inhibition of aspartokinase because aspartokinase is inhibited only in presence of threonine plus lysine and this leads to the production of overproduction of lysine this is how this reverted mutant will be a overproducer of lysine